game dev journey. So now what we need to do is set up the starting and ending for the player's movements because when the game starts, the main scene will need to tell the player that the game has begun. So we need some kind of a start function. So we can make our own start function. Um, we may as well put it at the top here. So I'm going to say function start. And what we'll do is we need to, we'll enable the process function. So we'll say set process and we'll set it to true. And we'll set the position of the player to um, pause. And we'll put the animated sprite into idle mode. Spelling mistake over there. Okay. So that's what our start function will do. It will enable the process function. So it'll it'll enable this function over here. And it will set the position of the player, which we'll we'll work out in a moment. And it will set the animation to idle. Okay, then what's gonna happen when the player dies? Well, we need a die function. So let's go function die. And let's say the animated sprite, so we'll go dollar animated sprite dot animation will equal our hurt or death animation, whatever it might be. And then we'll disable the process function. So the game stops. There we go. Right. So that should everything should still function as normal. Um, okay. Pause. Well, we have no um, pause variable at the moment. So this, this won't, um, this won't work until we've added this in later on. And this will come from a different uh, place. So just don't worry too much about that for now. Um, we'll get this working in a second. Okay, but what we do now need to do is prepare for collisions because the player should detect when it hits a coin or an obstacle, but we haven't um, made them do that yet. That's okay because we can use Godot's signal functionality to make it work. Now signals are a way for nodes to send out messages that other nodes can detect and react to. Many nodes have built in signals to alert you when a body collides, for example, or when a button is pressed. And you can also define your own signals, custom signals for your own purposes. Signals are used by connecting them to nodes that you want to listen and respond to. The connection can be made in the inspector or in code, but later in the project, you'll see how to connect signals in both ways. For now, we'll just add our own signals to our um, player we will have um, we'll put them up at the top here and we'll have a signal called pickup and a signal uh, called hurt so we can signal when we've picked something up or when we've been hurt um, now these are custom signals of course our player is going to emit them or send them out when they touch a coin or an obstacle and these touches will be detected by the area 2D itself. So if we select the player node over here and we come over here to node, you'll see that area 2D has its own signals. Um, and we want the one called area entered. I'm just gonna add a variable here called pause um, so we can get rid of that error. And now, now we can see our custom signals here as well, hurt and pick up, but we want this area signal over there. All right, because um, we're gonna click on the word connect over here. We're connecting it to our player script and it's creating a method called on player area entered. Okay, and we're gonna click connect. And there it makes it for us. So there's a, it creates a function for us. 
and this function runs when something enters when a body um, enters the player's area when when it collides with something else or overlaps right and what we want to detect is have we now hit a coin or have we hit an obstacle now there are going to be lots of coins and lots of obstacles so we're going to add the coins and the obstacles to groups which you'll see later on but for now we can just detect if it's in the group of coins or if it's in the group of obstacles so what we'll say is if the area is um, in a group is in group and now it just wants the name of that group so the name will be coins so if it's in if if this thing that we've collided with is part of the group called coins well then we must pick it up so we'll run our area uh, dot pickup right but if the area uh, and we must emit uh, we're going to run our pickup method and we're going to emit our pickup signal emit signal we should find our pickup signal somewhere here there it is pickup now if the area that we collided with is in the group obstacles or enemies or whatever it might be then we're going to run our um, then we're going to emit our hurt signal so we're going to say emit signal and we look for our hurt signal and we can call our die method so that's what's going to happen when we collect coins or when we um, hit an obstacle, we will die. So when another area 2D is detected, it will be passed to this function on player area entered. And it will be the thing that we collided with will be this variable here, area. So the coin object that we're going to make will have a pickup function that defines the coin's behavior when picked up. It's going to play an animation or a sound or something like that. And when you create the coins and the obstacles, you'll then assign them to the appropriate group so that we can detect them. Okay, so that's the end of our player scene. So what have we got? We've got a player who can run around in all directions speed is uniform in all directions and now we can hunt for coins and avoid obstacles so the next scene we make is going to be the coin